uh, all prophets uh, sinned. He 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 did not commit sin at, uh, any sins at all. Uh, all prophets uh, sinned. He 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 did not commit sin at uh, any sins at all. What ruins what? my understanding is the fact that you refuse to admit that Muhammad sinned. What other scholars he 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 committed no sin. That's what that's that's what the scholars say of Islam. He, uh, all prophets uh, sinned. Where do you want to go? Would, do you want to admit would, Muhammad is a sinner, or do you want to say that Allah doesn't know what He's talking about? Uh, all prophets uh, sinned. He 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 did not commit sin at uh, any sins at all. At this point, you're embarrassing yourself. You could no, have no, just admitted. No, you no, are. No, you no. are because you could have just admitted that Muhammad sinned and made yourself appear as if you had some level of integrity. So uh, Safraz has joined the stream here. Welcome, Safraz. What's up, before, Safraz? Before you say anything else, I want you to answer this challenge that we put yeah. at the start. <laughs> Prove you are morally worse than Muhammad, since Muhammad is your perfect example. He's the perfect human being. He was completely sinless. Name one way you are morally superior to Muhammad. I mean, in what do you mean I'm? Uh, what do you mean I'm? Most to pay dear to him. I, what I, way? I misspoke. One way, are you, name one way you're morally inferior to Muhammad. One way that you are a worse person. He was the, he was a more successful person ever in history. That's no not, one has oh, done. Okay, that's not a. That's, that's not, not a moral, moral claim. And you have to actually back it. So it's not a moral claim. Being successful isn't a moral claim. So try again. He. Uh, what was happening in Arabia at that time? They were burying their daughters alive. So they have were... you buried a daughter alive? No, I haven't. But what, what I'm okay, saying to so, you. Okay, so try again. Okay. Yep. <laughs> he was superior to all of us. And what he was way? superior to all of us. What way yeah? is he superior to you? What he did, was, but he was, what, he was. What sins have you done that Muhammad didn't do? He 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 never committed adultery. Are you saying you committed adultery? No, 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 no. I haven't. But he hasn't committed uh, adultery. Okay, then, then, he, then he's not superior to you. Yeah. Even if you were true, which you're wrong, by the way, he did commit adultery. But he that's didn't. Not no, no, he never committed adultery. He was a he was a king, a ruler. That's not a moral claim. It is. He, he was a proper. He had being a king is had, not a moral claim. Are you saying all kings are highly moral? No, he was a righteous king. Yeah, some that are evil, but he wasn't. He wasn't. That's he wasn't just evil. a statement. I, I'm still waiting for a way that Muhammad is superior to you, in morally. Yeah, he's superior in power. He's superior in accomplishments. We got that. What's a way he's morally superior to you? Yeah, but yeah, but he was just a human. Like Jesus wasn't like higher higher than uh, me. He was just a prophet as well. How many so, sins so did you're Jesus saying, commit? So you're agreeing that Muhammad's not superior morally to you? They're all, they're all equal, aren't they? They're all equal humans. Okay, let's, humans. Let's, let's, put, let, let's put your statement to the test here, buddy. So um, let me ask you this first. Did, did Muhammad commit sins like the Hadith say and like the Quran says? Tell him about that. Uh, he 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 did, did not commit sin at, uh, any sins at all. Okay, well then then please explain to me how someone who did not commit sins yeah. was forgiven of sins and asked for their sins to be forgiven. That that, that doesn't quite add up for me. Which uh, verse is that? Because I missed this uh, stream actually, you know. Um, which uh, which uh, verse is that in Quran? That is, will you look for it? Do you want me to look for it, buddy? Yeah, I'll, I'll pull something up here. Okay, so when when Thaddeus finds these verses and they're Sahih, um, will you then admit that Muhammad did actually commit sins? It depends which a, which a sin it was actually. You know, it could okay. be like a, is is one sin, sin a sin related to another sin, or is sin sin? 
Yeah, but it depends which sin he committed. If it's all, a sin, they all big or small, sins. is it a sin, yes or no? Yeah, obviously. Okay, but, so if, and um, Thaddeus, I think you pulled it up just a little bit ago, um, where Muhammad asked for... Uh, well, we're actually going to start with the Quran here, and then we'll go to the Hadith. Yeah, so take this, a look at your screen there, buddy. This is uh, 4719 Sahih International. So know, O Muhammad, that there's no deity except Allah, and ask forgiveness for your sin, and for the believing man and the believing woman. So Muhammad is commanded by Allah to ask forgiveness for his sin. That 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 could mean that could mean that God is asking him to uh, ask forgiveness that if he that if he that if he does commit the sin in the future, he says and ask forgiveness for your sin. Meaning, if you if you ever sin here, yeah, then ask for forgiveness. So, Fraz, I'm going to ask you, buddy. Do you want to do you want to restate what you said, or do you stand by it? He says, "So no, O Muhammad, there is no deity except uh, except Allah. And ask forgiveness for your sin, and ask for forgiveness for your sin. That could mean ask for, for, for forgiveness if you ever sin." Um. I don't. I don't see that as being an a, at all a possible explanation Why? of what this actually says. Why? Um, I because I think that you are embarrassed that you didn't know that Muhammad sinned, so you're trying to make an excuse for it, and it's no. complete nonsense. No, it could be not. It could be not. Ask forgiveness for your sin. Hey, Thaddeus. Ask Thaddeus, are you there, buddy? He might have frozen out on us, so it's just me and you. Um, Sas, uh, Safraz, can it, can I ask God for forgiveness of my sin? Wait, let me see. Does that mean that I sinned? He says, Allah is saying, ask forgiveness for your sin, yeah. for your sin. Yeah. So it could it could it could mean. Can I ask ways. forgiveness for something that I haven't done? No, but Allah is actually not. Allah is you know teaching him, teaching him. What to what to do? And no, Allah is telling Muhammad to ask forgiveness for his sin. It doesn't say you're you're adding words into your Quran, which is actually uh, going to put you out of Islam if you do that. Um, he is literally telling Muhammad to ask forgiveness for his sin. Muhammad, ask forgiveness for your sin. And there was a hadith that Thaddeus pulled up earlier that said that Muhammad asked for forgiveness seventy to one hundred times every single day. Of his past, present, and future sins, so it, it's not a coherent <laughs> position for you to to keep to say that Muhammad was sinless. It's just not coherent. So I would I'm urging you before you dig your hole deeper to just go. You know what? Yeah, that that I didn't know that, or I didn't realize that no, Muhammad did I'm sin like any other man, like any other person. He he committed sin and he asked forgiveness for it. I mean, it depends. It depends what sin is, because in the day, yeah, all prophets uh, sinned. Moses. Okay, did it. is okay. Pause. David. Pause. I I agree with you. All prophets sinned. Okay. Yeah. Including Muhammad. It could have, but it depends because I I haven't okay. heard of him. Is I, is I, Muhammad I, I, I a prophet? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay, and you said you made the claim that all prophets sinned. So therefore, your statement to be honest, to be logically honest, yeah. follows that Muhammad also sinned. I don't have a problem if you admit Muhammad sinned. That doesn't that doesn't ruin my my understanding. What ruins yeah. my understanding is the fact that you refuse to admit that Muhammad sinned. What other scholars he 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 committed no sin. That's what, that's that's what the scholars say of. Islam. He, okay, he, he, but he the primary, him. but the primary source here on your Quran says the exact opposite. Ask me before you sin. But it depends. I told you before. I told you before. It could work out both ways. It okay. Could be All right. L let me let me go with your argument. Okay. Ask forgiveness for your future sins. Allah is all knowing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So if He's going to be asking. Allah for forgiveness of some future sin, yeah, yeah. then that means that he's going to sin in the future. Allah knows that and knows that he ought to ask for forgiveness. No, what Allah is saying, yeah, what's what 
Allah is saying, ask forgiveness for your sin. That's, that means if you ever sin, then ask forgiveness. And, yeah, and but here's here's the issue. Followers. You, the, I'm I'm reading this verse, yeah, and it's very clear. And you're trying to turn it into it's something not that it is not. Clear. It's not. You it's not clear. It's ask not forgiveness clear. for your sin. Nobody misunderstands that. No, ask forgiveness for your sin. Meaning. If you ever see, then uh, forgiveness. No, okay. Simple. Then Allah is by far and away the worst communicator of all time because no, you have to come in and add those words. If in the future, you maybe see. perhaps you sin, then you should ask for forgiveness. Yeah, but that's yeah, pathetic. He's, no, he's not. He's just you know teaching him. He's just in teaching him. At the end of the day, if you ever sin, he's telling him. You know that not a human. And if you ever Allah, seen, okay, so <laughs> Allah knew he was going to sin or didn't know he was going to sin. Are you giving it an if? If you sin, then you should ask. Why would, why would Allah say to him that I that I know you are never going to sin? Why? Why would he say that for? That's like that's that's wrong. What is what he's actually not telling him that in the day if you ever sin, ask repentance. And that's what that's what he was you know doing. He was uh, he was in, asking for repentance. Hundred hundred times a day. That 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 did not mean that he was actually you no know, sinning. But you see, all right, dude. You're you're kind of you're, 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 at, at this point. You're embarrassing yourself. You could have no, no, just admitted. No, you no, are no, you no. are because you could have just admitted that Muhammad sinned and made yourself appear as if you had some level of integrity. No, um, no. But instead, you're continuing to bury yourself in a hole. That I'm not. You are. Everybody else on here with a with half a functioning brain cell understands that the word ask for forgiveness means that you have committed a sin. Even if we grant you that it's some future sin, that means that yeah. Muhammad will sin. But what you're doing here is you're trying to add words into the situation of if you did <laughs> sin, which implies that Allah doesn't know when if he will or if he won't sin, which causes a whole bunch of omniscience issues with Allah. So the easiest position for you, I'm trying to help you out here, man. The easiest thing for you to do is say, yes, Muhammad sinned. Muhammad is a man like everybody else. He had to ask for forgiveness. And that is why he is the perfect example for mankind. That's the position that you should have taken. But instead, you no. decided to go on this but, diatribe but, of, of but stupid there's no things. But there's, but there's no commentaries for this verse which, which, which says that he did, you know, you know, that he did actually sin. There's no commentary on that. There's no none of the commentaries say that he actually committed a sin. So the so, so the primary source of the Quran, which comes from according to you guys, is a direct speech of Allah, knows about some sort of sin that Muhammad had, did, or will commit, and commands him to ask forgiveness for it, right? That's what it says. Then Muhammad asked for forgiveness in the Sahih Hadith. Okay, those are two primary sources that are indicating that Muhammad sinned. Okay, two okay. primary sources that indicate he sinned. The, the no. scholars can do whatever they want. That's absolutely fine. But you are going against what your Quran says. You're going against what your Sahih Hadith say. And you're coming to an absurd humble, conclusion. Oh, then that's humble. fine. Muhammad didn't sin. Humble. So we can go with that argument too. You fail all. It, there's nowhere for you to go. Muhammad didn't sin, which means that Allah didn't know that Muhammad wasn't going to sin. And therefore, Allah is not omniscient. But, but Where do you want to go? Would, do you want to admit Muhammad is a sinner? Or do you want to say that Allah doesn't know what he's talking about? Why would Allah say, say to him that in the day that I, that, I, that I know you will never sin why would allah say that to him for that that doesn't make any sense you just even telling him that in the day if you if you ever sin if you sin ask for forgiveness simple he never sinned there's no such where thing does of, it say if sin. you sin ask for forgiveness and then again that puts you into the bind of saying that allah doesn't know if he's going to sin or not allah allah knows but you're telling him because he's a human he's a human telling him that if you ever sin repent to me teaching him teaching him I'm done with this argument because you are not making any sense right now. One other thing I'm going to add to you is the Quran says that all that that um, Satan has touched every single person on earth except for Mary, the mother of Jesus and, and yeah. Mary. Right? Why? And Jesus himself. Why? Why? Because Why? because Jesus is the no. Allah. He is the no, word no, of no, Allah. No, no. Because and he is a pure spirit, the root Allah from 
from him. Okay. But no, Muhammad was that. touched by Satan. Mm. Sasra, stop, stop. Muhammad was touched by Satan. Okay. Which clearly indicates that even if Muhammad didn't sin, he was still touched by Satan and Jesus wasn't. So who is the morally superior person? Who is the superior individual in this particular circumstance, even from Islamic standards? It's clear that Jesus is superior in every single way. Okay? So that's all I have to say. I'll let you spout some nonsense here for a second. And when the Thaddeus no, no, gets no. back, I'll have you get dropped because I really don't want to talk to you anymore because yeah. you're not making no. sense. No, no. The reason why Satan did, did not touch uh, Jesus and uh, Mary was because if you, if you read of the verse where her mother, Hannah, her mother, Hannah, prayed to Allah and said, please protect my offsprings. Please protect him from Satan. That's the reason why Allah did not let Satan touch Mary and Jesus because of the prayer of Hannah. How did Muhammad's children fare? Huh? How did Muhammad's children fare? Did they did they get touched by Satan? No, or but he he's, or did he forget to pray for that? No, no, no. That was Hannah Tarid. Told you, Hannah Tarid. No, I know. I'm I'm asking you. Did did Muhammad's children turn out okay, or did did most of them? Uh, Pass away. It was okay. Uh, tragic. It was okay. It was they okay. Were, huh? They were. It so they okay. weren't. They weren't touched by Satan. That is not. Uh, that is not matter. Well, if, if Muhammad's a prophet and Hannah is not a prophet, and she's able to ask Allah to not touch her children and and uh, grandchild, and Allah heeded their advice, then then I would assume that Muhammad would have the same ability to ask Allah for something, and He would grant that to him. But it just seems to me like none of that happened. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't ask for it. He didn't. Do you didn't um? Ask. Do you want to keep going on this discussion? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello? we can hear you. Yeah. So, Safraz, in previous streams, you've told us that you can't go to scholars. That all Muslim scholars are unreliable. You haven't said those exact words, but whenever we've appealed to a scholar, you've told us that person's a liar. You can't trust them. Now, when we tell you, we quote directly from the Quran, you tell us no scholar interprets that way, which I'm no, betting I, is false. I bet you I can find scholars that interpret it that way. But that's re regardless of that, how come you only will, when, when you don't want to go with what the Quran says, you say, look at scholars. When you don't want to go with what the scholars of Islam say, you say, look at what the Quran says. Do you have any consistency whatsoever? No, no. What one, can we one, go to? What can we go to? What can we always go to that will always be accurate? I said to you in the day, uh, all the all the, all the commentaries, every single commentary, do, every single commentary does not France, say. These, you're not things. addressing what that is. You're not answering the question. All the huh? No, I, I don't care. If, you, oh, Safraz, I don't care if every commentary says it or not. I, I'm getting. I'm betting that's false. But even if it's true, it doesn't matter. I'm asking you a question. Which is more authoritative, the scholars, the consensus of the scholars, or the Quran? The, because you'll see different things on different days. No, because to understand the Quran, you have to go through the commentaries, obviously. Okay, so that, that sounds like to me that the commentaries, then, according to you, which explain the Quran... Are um, are the thing that we should be reading and not the actual Quran itself? Is that correct? But 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 you know Allah but, says in the in, Allah here, says in the Quran. Safraz, let me let me let me push you on this. Safraz. Okay, is it is it okay to um, have sex with a prepubescent child and then divorce her, according to your Quran? Uh, prepubescent girl and divorce her. And all Other, the scholars, that, that, I might add. Yeah, because yeah. that's where I'm going to press. You haven't that. heard that before. Uh, yeah, uh huh. Sure, Safraz. I have. Nice I have. I have. I have. There is a verse that there is a verse that you know, being, I've been. I've been. Sixty-five. Hating. Sir, sixty-five, verse four. If you want to pull it up and read it. Okay, it says that there must be a three-month waiting period after divorce to confirm that these particular females aren't pregnant. Right, one is menopausal, the other one is prepubescent, and the other one is pregnant. Okay. The 
Quran says that for those who have not menstruated, their waiting period is still three months. You go to the tafsirs, every single one of them that I have ever read says that it is because of their young age. They are too young. That is why they have not menstruated. So according to the Quran, it is allowable for a man a grown man, let's say a 54-year-old and a six-year-old, to get married and consummate the marriage with that girl. And if he gets tired of her, he has every right to, after he's consummated the marriage, to divorce her. But before she remarries, she must wait three months to make sure she's not pregnant. The only way she'd be pregnant, Safraz, is if she had had sex before her first period. Yeah, but this is happening... there's a word this for this, Safras. No, Safras. There's a word you want for an this. Answer. I'm waiting. Go ahead and answer. So, no, what I'm, what I'm saying to you, this was happening back in the, those times. This was happening in the Old Testament as well. Okay, so, Safras. So, was, so what, what you're happening. doing here, there, here, here's two things that you're doing here right now. These are both logical fallacies. One, you're throwing out a red herring. You're trying to distract from the point because you're super embarrassed no, by no, it. No, no, and no, two, no. you're also making the two quo quay fallacy. You're trying to say, well, this thing happened. It even happened in your religion. Okay, let me ask this you just happening. a point. Safraz, let me ask you a point blank question. If a grown man has sex with a nine-year-old girl today, yeah, and you wanted to define that in one word, what his problem is, what would you define that as? Uh, this time is... It's, I think, is wrong. But at that time, it was actually what, normal. What word of wrong is normal. that? What, what, what do we call that? What's that? No, no. What, what do we call here? true or false? A grown What's man that? having sex with a nine-year-old child is called pedophilia. In one word, true or false? If it's pedophilia, why was it Christian churches allowing it? Safraz, you're doing the two quo quay fallacy, no, no, and no, you're throwing no, out a red hair. Safraz, Safraz. Is Safras, I'm going to make it really easy for you. Yeah. I'm going to make it really, really easy for you. You <laughs> just told us that the Quran doesn't apply to the modern world. We agree. Abandon your Quran and get in the modern world. What I'm trying to say to you, it was happening back then. It, so it doesn't back matter back if it was that... happening or not. It, this is God's <laughs> eternal word, according to you. This is for all people and all societies in all places. What ha- was happening in 7th century Arabia is ar- irrelevant. Unless you want to admit that it's a text written for 7th century Arabian people, which is our position on what the Quran is. It was it was happening in Israel as well. Safraz. Is it I don't care if it was happening on the sex. entire planet. So why, so why are you just talking man? about Arabia? That's all. Why, Safraz, uh, why are you just addressing Safraz, Arabia? We are talking um, Safraz, about... Safraz, we are Safraz talking about just... Morality. Once command apply to modern society, yes or no? Does all his eternal word here. apply to modern society? Is to, all his eternal word honest, apply to, to modern society? To, to, to be honest, now it's kind of hard to get my to a kid. I know it's, I know it's hard. Living in a modern world, is, you know, it's going to be hard to add a kid. Obviously, it's wrong now. So then, it, so then, either Allah didn't know what was going to happen in the future and gave you moral commands for a specific time that He stupidly didn't tell you were limited to a specific time, or the the Quran. He he cut out there, buddy. But the, the, this is what I'm concerned with right now. Yeah, I'm 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 afraid that you do see this as a major problem. Right. I, I think it would it, as a as an intelligent person, I, I think you would absolutely see this as a major problem. Um, the fact that the timeless Quran and the best example for mankind actually practiced and prescribed um, pedophilic activities. No, it was that's not a book that, that you would want to follow. Commanded. You don't want to follow that book, man. It was commanded by God. The the angel come to him and said, You have to you have to Ari Aisha and and He's me 
it your wife in it, this but world and it's the wrong other. okay so we're talking about morality here and we're talking about god so the morality of god needs to be timeless especially when muslims make the claim that the book was written for all people of all time if you're going to make that claim then the moral and then it shouldn't be morally relative it should be morally objective and always true so if you're going to be making the claim that it is for all people of all time, then that means everything stated in the Quran and every example that Muhammad did should be timeless. It should be objectively, morally uh, good. But you have already admitted that it is wrong today. So if you want to make the Quran a relative mor moral book, therefore making it not objectively true, then you can hold that position and we can't argue with you. It, it, it depends makes, on no, the culture. No, it what's happening? The it's, no, it's happening is it, at what Sa point Safraz. in time will you say, I, I want to hear Safraz say this. Safraz, I want to hear you say that it is morally good at one point in world history for a 54-year-old man to have sex with a nine-year-old girl. I want to hear you say that. What's that? No. No, no. What was it question Why again? won't you say that? What was it question again? I want to hear you say that at one point in human history, it was morally good for a 54-year-old man yeah. to have sex with a nine-year-old girl. I want to hear you say that, that that's what you believe. My say, well, Holly, is, I believe that that's good. My, my belief is after reading all the scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and, and the Quran, that... God allowed this to happen in the Old Testament and in the Quran. So I, I, I want to hear you say, Wallahi, I believe it was right for Muhammad at 54 years old to yes. have sex with nine-year-old Aisha. I want you to say that. I believe, I believe if God commanded him, Ari no, Aisha, then, I don't then, want qualifiers. then, it, was, then it was okay. I don't then, want then qualifiers. Okay. I don't want qualifiers. I want you no, to be it's, bold. It's in the, I want the you to be bold. And I want you to tell us that it was right for Muhammad to have sex with a nine-year-old girl when he was 54. I want you to be bold and say It was that. right back then. It was right no, back then. No, I don't want qualifiers. Was, I want you to say. I want you to right say that it was right. Then. Okay. So, but you believe that it is wrong for today. So what you've Today done is, is you've made it, no, hold on. What you've done is you've made the actions and teachings of your Quran and your uh, Hadith, you have made them morally relative. And therefore you have made Muhammad and Allah um, uh, only applicable to a particular time and a place. And therefore... Anybody today can say that was good back then. It is no longer good now. The moral laws and teachings of, of Allah and Muhammad are no longer applicable to me. And therefore, you've made the Quran an obsolete book. <coughs> no, no. I, I've told you have. You. That, that's no, the no. logical conclusion. You might not understand it, but that's the logical conclusion that's come from this. Listen. So I want you to please... Pause for a second, buddy. I can tell you're struggling with this. I'm not. I'm not. And struggling. I want you. Mm, okay, you can say that you're not. I hope because that what you're, you're doing, this, what you're doing, you're, this you're is wrong. No, you know, let me speak. You're you're ignoring the Bible. You're 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 ignoring where it says. You right. can have, uh, let's let's you can have, let's uh, go there. Let's let's no. go there. But before we go there, yeah, I want I I want you to to tell me. That if the Bible doesn't say what you're saying, that you'll follow Christ. If I can prove to you that what, what you're trying to say is, is incorrect, you have a misunderstanding, then will you reject Islam and follow Christ? Because if, if you're not willing to do that, then that means that you're not genuinely interested in having this conversation. You know, it depends. It depends what, no. what way. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quote you. You're going uh, to Google... Whatever no, Muhammad or Ahmed Didat says. No, okay. I don't. I'm no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that. What is you have to you have to read book of Numbers chapter thirty one verse seventeen to eighteen. Oh, I'm so surprised. What's yes, it say? No, yeah, you're surprised. What's then, it say? 
What's it right. say? Let me let me let me let me let me go. Oh, oh, you don't even know what it says. Okay, got no, it. I know, so, I know it says, but his Facebook group just said make reference to this one. That, that's the most common one that you guys bring up, so we're prepared to answer it. So please yeah. go ahead and read it for us. Right, it says, it says, <coughs> it says, now therefore kill every male among the little ones and every woman that has that has known by known man by lying with him, but all the women children that have not known by man by lying you know, with you're, you're making you're making stuff up here man read what it actually says it's king james version it's king james no version. no that's not king what it james says. version it says but all the all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves so okay. keep the little virgin girls for yourselves okay so what have you got to say about that well what is what is your objection first and foremost i, I want to know that is that is showing that God allowed people to take little girls, little virgin girls, as as a uh, royals. You can have them, take them after 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 you've killed their mothers and what do you say? And after after you killed their mothers. Okay, so it doesn't say that. Number one, so you're you're lying. That. You're you're lying about my Bible, and I would ask no, you to please you stop that, lying. Man. He does it doesn't say that. Okay. So your objection is to say that Israel saved the virgins. Is that correct? It says God allowed them to take little virgin girls. It, it, no. It, are, no you it are you interpreting that sexually? Are you interpreting it sexually? He says, but no, all you're not interpreting it. Safraz, are you interpreting it sexually? Yes or no? No. Then why are you going okay, to this to problem? show that the Bible teaches prepubescent sex? And that's what no, I was trying to ask him. What's wrong? I'm I'm trying to figure out exactly what his objection is to all this. I it's, he, it's, it's just it's just not saying here. It's saying that keep uh, keep all the children, the girls, little girls, mm -hmm. keep them there for yourselves. Keep them alive for yourselves. Okay. Them. Okay. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? What's what's wrong with that? No, seriously, what's wrong with that? What are you what do you actually what do you find objectionable here? What's wrong with that shows, what's yeah, wrong that with shows taking that shows. what's wrong with removing virgin girls um and and uh keeping them alive for, for yourself? What's wrong with that? I, I think it's a good yourself. thing that you rescue people who are innocent. I don't really see a problem for with yourselves. That. Come on, okay. keeping keeping them alive. Well, what are you trying cells. to say? I want you to Zafraz, say it directly. Zafraz, I asked you if you're interpreting it sexually. So stop with trying to make an innuendo and answer the the question. Is it sexual? Yes or no? Are they keeping them alive for themselves sexually to take sexual advantage of them, or are they just well, keeping them alive? It says. Uh, for me, it says keeping them alive, but at the same time, it could be. You can have them, uh, you know, as your, uh, as his, as his wife's wife. Okay, so you what can, does the text so say you as your wife? Marry. So what what you're saying here is, even though the text doesn't say what you're saying, what you're saying is that it's okay for Israelite men to marry virgin women. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, what is morally objectionable about marrying someone who is a virgin? You know, it depends. It depends on their not age. They they could have been any age. Okay. They what could was have been their a, age? Huh? What was their age? Are, are you going to make an argument from silence, or what, what direction it, are you no, going to no, go? No, 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 no. So then you're it, making an argument from silence. It is. It is. It does not say the age, but but it, but, it, but, it, but it says it clearly that all the little uh, women, children, have them for yourselves. But it, it, it does not say the age. It does not give. Rules it doesn't say anything about females. sex. It doesn't say anything about sex or marriage either. So you're adding to the text. No, you're adding to the text that it's sexual or marriage. And you're adding an age. So you're adding two things to the text to make it supposedly the same as what your Quran teaches. No, my my argument is here is that is is end of the day in the in the Bible there is no age limit. There is no such thing as age limit. So that's your argument. You're trying to you're trying to use this verse to show that there is no age limit for marriage in the Bible. Is that no. actually what you're trying to claim here? Well, I'm trying to say to you, yeah, the 
God of Israel and the God of you know the old prophets here, he he did not give an age limit of who can you know the age limit okay. of who of, of how old you can honey. All right, and, no, there's no and, such thing. Okay, so what's your point? Then it's no, okay. My, then it's okay for fifty-four-year-old Muhammad to climb on top of nine-year-old prepubescent little girl or Aisha and have sex with her because the God of the Bible, according to you, not to anyone else, didn't put an age limit on that. So if it's morally okay for our Bible, then it's morally okay for the Quran. Is that the actual position that you're trying to take? My my argument is yeah that is the same rules are applying to the, it's a it's a it's a, you know, so you're a, making the two quo quay fallacy. No, you're saying a, two a, wrongs a make a right. God, it's the same God, the same God of the Quran and the Bible, the same. Okay. Our God, God and, is called Father. What's your God's name? Yes, no, he's, no, he's God called Father. He's called Yahweh. Yahweh. Your God's name is Yahweh. No, 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 it's, no. I'm saying the, <laughs> the one in Bible. Okay. My called, God's uh, name. My my Yahweh. God has a name. My God's name is Yahweh. Yeah. Okay. Got, my name, I mean, my my God, even in the Old Testament, calls himself Father. Does is, is your God described in both of those ways? Does your God have the name Yahweh and describe himself as a father? The word the word Father was only used for the children of Israel. It was it, it was only for them at that time that they matter. were calling. It, it was, doesn't it matter. Was, it doesn't does. matter. Okay. It does not matter. The Jews, the, is the, your God's Jews, name Yahweh? Yes or no? No. Okay. But at the so, same time, at the si how order, many order, names does your answer. God have? He's got he's got many names. He's got ninety nine names. Now, no, no, which, no, no, no. which one of his ninety nine names are Yahweh? More than that. He's which got, one's Yahweh? Than, which got, one is Yahweh? Let me answer. You know, let me answer. He's got more names. I don't than care nine. how many names he has. <laughs> I care if, if one has of them is Yahweh. Names. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Where is he named Yahweh? Stop. He isn't. He's just called us Allah. Okay, right? okay so we don't, so, have, the so we don't have the same God. No, but the but okay. the Jews the worship Adonai and the Hashem. The, the the Jews call him Hashem. What's your point? So so they call, call him Hashem. Jehovah. Do you know why they call him? Do you even know what Hashem, Hashem. means? Safraz? I don't, I don't know as well. They call him. I don't what does Safraz, Safraz, what does what does Hashem mean? Translate that in English for us. What does Hashem mean? I don't, yeah, I don't Google know. it real quick and try to figure out what it means. <laughs> Hit your Google, man. So, so you memorized an argument and you didn't even you memorized some words to say and you didn't even know what they meant. Lovely. And you expect Sarah. us to, to trust you. Okay. Did you find it out yet? Know. What what did what did Prophet Google say to what? you? No, it it just it What's just Shane says Google that say? it, it just it just says here that end of the day is used to refer to God but, uh when a Hush, let me let me help you out so, here so real even, quick. Um yeah, sorry that is and I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get going here because this guy's Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead. Um oh you dropped. Okay, so let me so go ahead and I went ahead. this really yeah. I went ahead okay. and removed Safraz. Uh, we're going to have to end the stream because, as you can tell, uh, our power went out and my cell phone does not get great reception at our house. Okay. So I keep dropping in and out. Uh, I think Safraz was given ample opportunity to make his point. All he did is tell us the Quran is no longer relevant for today. We agree. Uh, then he, he said, no, 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 no. The, the Bible says that... At, in Numbers 30, uh, okay, what does that say? Well, uh, 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 let me go look that up, a prophet Google. All right, then he reads the text, and then I'm like, is it sexual? No, it's, he says no. And then he keeps saying it, clearly trying to make an innuendo that it is sexual. So I ask him again, and he says yes. So he doesn't even know his own the own argument that he's tried to memorize from a Dawah script. He doesn't know how to make the argument. And he's totally confused, but he did admit that the Quran is not relevant for today. He did admit that he he couldn't think of any way that Muhammad is morally superior to himself. And uh, what else did it, what did he do? What, remind me. Um, I don't know. I <laughs> he he just failed in every particular argument. So he tried to do the two quoque fallacy, right? To say, well, your God says that it's okay to marry children, even though it doesn't. Um, he then tried to illustrate that uh, um, 
that our God and his God are the same, which he oh, yes, refused I forgot to do, that one. and Yahweh. And then he has no idea what Hashem means, but he says, Jews call God Hashem, which just means the name, because Jewish people believe that they can't even take the Lord's name in vain at all. So they don't even say Yahweh. So Hashem is making reference to the name Yahweh of all the gajabillion names of Allah, none of which are Yahweh. We don't have the same God, not in character, not in name, not in any way whatsoever. Your God is not a father to anyone, period. End of story, which includes, by the way, your stupid argument that it's only for the Jews. That's not even what it says. Um, so anyway, it was kind of a waste of time but he did a great job in allowing us to show everybody how uh, I, i'm gonna actually have to disagree is. with you on that it, it's not a waste of time because he shows how empty and vapid these muslim dawah scripts are he memorized the script but he couldn't defend anything in it because it's total nonsense as soon as he's pressed on any point he just has to say i don't know and try to google something really quick then comes up with a contradictory explanation to what he just gave Safraz, open your eyes. Watch this tape back. See how many times you contradicted yourself, let alone scripture. See how many times you appeal to the Bible and then you tell us the Bible's false. See how many times you appeal to Muhammad and Allah and then you tell us that we can't trust what the Quran says. You have to go to scholars. And then we go to scholars and you tell us you can't trust what scholars say. You have to go to the Quran. All you do is contradict yourself. This is the, I don't know, fourth time or so we've had a chat. Every time, same thing. As soon as you're off your script, you can contradict yourself. Stop for a minute. Think. Yeah. And, Is this and, really how you want to live your life? Do you want to really exactly. constantly live your life in contradiction where you have to make up a new lie to cover up your previous lie? Or do you want to repent and be set free? Jesus says, Amen. those who the Son sets free are free indeed. Free indeed. Amen. Any and, last and that's what we that's, and, and that's what we pray for Safraz and any other Muslim who's watching this. Please do your homework like I said at the beginning. Research everything we said. Try to find um, good quality objections to things that we say that so that so that you could you could either you know prove us wrong and then we can be led to the truth. Or you can realize that the position that you're holding to is actually a false ideology, and then you can reject the falsehood and move closer to truth. And that's all That's all that we're asking of you to do, is to really consider this and keep in mind that your eternity, your, your eternal salvation is at stake with these decisions. This is not a game. It's not a game of chess. This is not a game of checkers or football. This is a game for your eternal salvation. And I take it very seriously, Thaddeus. I know you do as well. And we're out here on the battlefields having discussions with people because we are truly truth seekers. We, of course, have found a position that we like to hold to. Um, but I can promise you, at least for myself, that if my position ends up being untrue, that I will not cling to that because that would be stupid for my eternal soul. Right. So I'm willing to go out there. I'm willing to say whatever I need um, you know, to say for the truth to be heard. And that's that. So I just hope and pray that everybody listening, one Muslim who didn't say anything or uh, Safraz or whoever else was out there to deeply consider the kind of mental gymnastics you have to do to try to make Islam seem at all palpable for anybody to cling on to. And that's it. Amen. Be sure to hit like everyone. So YouTube will share this video with more people. Uh, I'll have a couple more streams this week, so t stay tuned for those. Have a great week, everyone. God bless. Hey, see you guys. God bless.